It didn't take much to push Michael Jordan to Destroyer of Worlds mode. Sometimes all you had to do was exist. Just ask LeBradford Smith. The COVID-19 pandemic shut everything down for a few months. Times were tough for everybody, and many folks wondered if things would ever get back to normal. The one positive outcome of the shutdown during the pandemic would be that this was the moment the world discovered what happens when Michael Jordan takes something personal. The highly anticipated The Last Dance came out on April 19, 2020, and it took over the world by storm. Young basketball fans who never got a chance to watch Jordan play had their chance to witness the greatness of the GOAT. And one of those traits was when someone upset his airness. It was March 19, 1993, and the Washington Bullets were in Chicago getting ready to play the two-time defending champion Bulls. Nobody figured the Bullets would have a shot to win, and in fact, they didn't. The Bulls defeated the Bullets 104-99, but the attention from the media after the game wasn't directed toward a Bull. Even in the loss, second-year man LeBradford Smith, out of the University of Louisville, had himself a game. Despite the fact his team lost, Smith scored a career-high 37 points on 15-for-20 from the field and 7-for-7 7 7 from the free-throw line. Not only did Smith go off in the game, but he also did it against the greatest player of all time. And while Smith was firing on all cylinders, Jordan struggled from the field. Jordan scored 25 points on just 9 of 27 from the field. It was one of those rare off days for Jordan, which normally would have gone unnoticed since the Bulls won. But since Smith had his career game, this became a big deal, and Smith knew it. LeBradford Smith was trying to tell the reporters at postgame to not make a big deal out of it, Will Perdue said in an episode of the Bulls Talk podcast back in May 2020. Because it was a career high, they basically wanted him to say things. And he kind of was hoping that they would kind of brush it aside and be like, oh, heck, I got lucky. But they wanted to make a big deal about, yo, man, you scored a career high on Michael Jordan. <laughs> knowing we were playing them the next night, knowing what MJ is like. And the interesting thing was, I remember the next day, it really was, I know they mentioned something about Michael said, this is what I'm going to do. But there, was, it was more about... We were talking in the locker room about just when Michael gets the ball, just get the hell out of the way. Because <laughs> he's just going to go at the Bradford hmm. time and time again. And it was kind of like an unwritten rule that everybody knows that Michael has that stat sheet in his back pocket, in his sock. He knows exactly how many points Le Bradford scored, and he wants to get that many or more in the first half. That was going to be Jordan's plan for the next game against the Bullets, which just so happened to be the next night in Washington. Jordan was going to score, in the first half, what Smith scored total in the last game. It's been reported that after the game on March 19th, Smith approached Jordan as they walked off the court and said, Nice game, Mike. As the last dance revealed, Smith never said this to Jordan. In fact, Jordan made it up in his head as a way to get himself motivated. A couple of writers went up to Michael and said, did this ever happen? And Michael, was, with a smile, just like, no, I made it up. Jordan would play with a sense of motivation only he seemed to bring to the court. In the first half, Jordan jumped all over Smith, hitting from all angles. Jordan started the game shooting 8 of 8 from the field, and he wouldn't stop shooting. There was nothing the Bullets could do or anyone on planet Earth to stop Jordan in this first half. Jordan's mission of scoring in the first half of what Smith scored in the last game nearly happened. With about two seconds remaining in the first half, Jordan went to the line to shoot two free throws. He sank the first one, which gave him 36 in the half. The second free throw bounced out and Jordan finished one shy of Smith's previous performance. Jordan didn't play much in the second half as the Bulls were destroying the Bullets. The Bulls won the game by a score of 126 to 101. Jordan ended up with 47 points on 16 for 27 shooting, including two for two from three-point land. Smith, on the other hand, scored only 15 while shooting five for 12 from the field. LeBradford Smith learned a valuable lesson on that night, whether it was his fault or not. Never anger the goat because he will take it personally. Decades later, we learned, MJ and his imagination had no limits when he felt a revenge is needed. Tell us in the comments, what is your favorite Jordan revenge story? And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. For even more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels, Free Dawkins and Vintage Dawkins, and follow us on social media.